Thank you. The Great Escape. When you think of an escape, what, what picture comes to your mind? You know, I think of a, an inmate in a concentration camp using a spoon to dig a tunnel, or a prisoner using dental floss to cut through the bars. So the question is, escape from what? It, it might not look like it, but I'm a prisoner right now, and I need to escape. I'm standing here, and what I'm thinking about is, am I as good as the other speakers? Are you going to be bored? Am I, am I going to make a fool of myself? What, what if I forget what I'm supposed to say? And it's this inward self-thinking preoccupation with me that holds me a prisoner. What I should be saying is, how can I help you? Can I, can I do something here that will entertain you or enlighten you or inspire you? But instead, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried about myself. This is what I'm trying to escape from. And it's really hard. It's me. I can't get away from myself. You know, I, I go to bed at night, I wake up, and, and there I am. You know, and, and I, I run down the street. There I am. I'm right behind me. And wherever I go, I'm there, and I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to always be stuck with this self-confining, preoccupation, selfish thinking. I want to break free. I want to have the kind of mind that looks outward it's not only concerned about myself, but it's, it's looking at the people around me and, and, and thinking about them as well. Now, there's, there's a problem here. It's not just one me. It's all the me's in the world. I'm just one me in my little box with seven and a half billion other me's all over the world, each in their little boxes. And, and, and uh, we stay in our little boxes most of the time. And yeah, there's other boxes around. I'm kind of aware of that, but I don't really care because my little box is the most important box because it's my box. I'm the one that's in it. It's kind of like, um, think of a traffic jam. You get four lanes of traffic. Now, picture this in Bulgaria especially. You got four lanes of traffic, <laughs> and it narrows down to two lanes. I'm in my car. I don't care about the people behind me. That's, you know, that's their problem. I'm looking at that bottleneck I've had up ahead and thinking, how am I going to get around that? Uh, the cars on the side I'm not too concerned about, but they might be competition. The cars ahead of me, they're obstacles. And so everyone is trying to get through the bottleneck, and you know, this guy's going up on the shoulder, and this guy's you know, squeezing through here. And what happens is there's complete gridlock. No one's moving anywhere because everyone is just thinking of themselves and you know, beeping their horns, and, and it's all just tied up. If they would just take turns. You know, like, okay, you go, then you go, then I'll go, and the traffic would keep moving. But it's, it's not like that. Being self-focused is so natural. I don't have to learn how to be selfish. I, that's just my default position. But what I find, it, there, there's a continuum. So on one end, we have the person that never thinks of anyone but themselves. Now, that person doesn't really exist, but no, it, it anchors one end of the scale. On the other end of the scale, we have the person, again, this person probably doesn't really exist, but they're always thinking, you know, how can I help you? What's happening with you? you know, how, how's everything going? And, and, and that's the other end of the scale. So I spend a lot of my time down here on this end of the scale, and it's not really all that fulfilling. I don't accomplish a whole lot. I, it, it's where I'm kind of comfortable, but it's not helping me be my best, and I'm certainly not moving society or anyone else forward. And it's kind of a paradox that for selfish reasons, it's good not to be selfish. As I move along this paradox, I find out like, wow, life gets better. My relationships are richer, I accomplish more, I'm more fulfilled, and, and I'm happier. So for selfish reasons, I want to move away from selfishness. The trouble with this inward thinking mindset, and, and, and here's the phrase for the, for the conference, right? It distorts reality. It's like I'm trying to look to, to the whole world, to this little hole, through the, through the peephole on my door, and, and, and I can kind of see what's going on out there, but I miss everything on the peripherals because I'm, I got this just narrow, me-centered view. And what I need to do is escape, open the door, and step outside and see that there's a whole other world of people out there. It's kind of like the difference of 
being on a mountaintop. You know, when, when, when I'm outward looking, when I consider the needs of others and my neighbors, my students, my, my co-workers, the administrators above me, it's freeing. I can see all around. I get this beautiful panorama. Every direction I look, there's opportunities. But when I shrink back to this side of the scale, it's like I'm stuck in a cave. I'm trying to squeeze through this little hole. And yeah, I, I'm making progress, but it's really hard. And I don't have many options, and there's not much wiggle room. And so how do I break out of this uh, me-centered mindset, this inward mindset that's, that seems to come so naturally? Well, one way is just to ask questions. Now, not all questions are equal. Not all questions are going to cause me to have an outward mindset. Uh, suppose I'm sitting in my office uh, at the university here, and a student comes. They knock on the door, and, and I'm really busy, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, I've got to prepare for lectures and stuff, and, and they're knocking on the door and say, Professor, and I'm, you know, I, I'm at my laptop, and I go, what do you want? Uh, it doesn't really communicate, like, in, in openness. But suppose instead, they knock on the door, they open it, I close my laptop and say, hello, come on in, how can I help you? Suddenly, now we have a connection and at the end of that 10 or 15 minutes we spend together, we're both going to be enriched by it. So what are some of the questions we can ask? What are some of those questions that uh, we can use to help us uh, get out of this inward mindset and start looking at the world around us, and especially the world of people around us? One of the questions that I think is helpful is just by starting with thinking, how can I contribute? How can I, I give something to this situation? Our normal reaction is to ask, What's in it for me? Uh, I like to think of this as the difference between going out for dinner by yourself. So, uh, you know, you go to a restaurant, you're by yourself, and of course you're going to order what you want, and you expect the waiter and the, the cook staff and everything to, to give you your meal. And you get your meal, and you enjoy it, kind of, because it's what you ordered, but you're by yourself. Now compare that to a gathering of friends. You're going to meet at one of your friend's homes, and everyone's going to, to bring something to the meal. And each of these friends of yours, they, each one knows each other. They, they know what each other likes, they know what each other doesn't like. And so I, I'm getting ready for this. Oh, I'm going to buy this wine because I know Ivan really likes this wine. And then somebody says, well, don't forget that Georgi's a vegetarian. Let's make sure we have something for Georgi. And each person is bringing something to the table that they know is going to serve uh, the other person there. Or think about your time at university. Of course, when you go to a university, you're asking questions, and you should ask these questions. How is this university going to help me? Will they help me get a job? Will they uh, you know, help me in my career path? I mean, you're paying tuition. Those are good questions to ask. But in, in addition to asking those questions, why don't you also ask, how can I add something to this university? How can I contribute to the mission of this university to make it better? How can I help my classmates who I'm going through this experience with, how can I help them be successful? And I found from my experience uh, of, of teaching here that it's those students who break out, who escape from their inward mindset, they're the ones that go on to do amazing things. They're the ones that go on to, to give TED Talks. There's, there's a good example of uh, this in the corporate world. Uh, CFS2, it's a debt collection agency. Now, normally, a debt collection agency is not your favorite kind of business. You don't want to get a call from a debt collector. A debt collector's job is to get money from you at any cost. But Bill Bartman, who had been in debt himself, had a different idea. He thought, well, why is it that people get in debt? They get in debt because they don't have money. If they had money, they could pay their debts. And so he said, I'm going to make a different kind of debt collection company. Instead of trying to get as much money out of my clients as possible, you know, what's in it for me, instead of you know, trying to threaten them and cajole them, browbeat them to get money from them, you know, making 10 phone calls a day, I'm going to figure out how I can get them money. Because if they have money, they'll be able to pay me. And so he started offering different services. He said, well, one reason people don't have money is that they, they're either underemployed or unemployed. What would happen 
If we just offer a free service to help write resumes, give mock interviews, connect them with employers, uh, drive them to interviews, help them fill out job applications. So they started to do that for free. And then they said, well, some of these people are, are, are kind of on the poor side. Let's see if we can connect them with free government services. Let's see if we can get them food stamps, unemployment benefits, uh, different types of uh, you know, welfare, Medicaid, whatever. And so they would, for free, they would take their time to connect their clients with free government services. And then they said, well, let's, let's see if we can help them with their other debts, even the debts that we're not responsible for. How about if we negotiate with those debtors and see if we can get a lower, a lower return rate? And then he went even further. He told his employees, look, I'm going to give you bonuses. But your bonuses will not be based on how much debt you collect, but on how many services you provide for free. The more services you give the clients, the higher your bonus will be. So after three years, his debt collection agency had double the collection rate of any other uh, debt collection agency out there. Also, and, and this is unheard of, he won an award, not just once, but twice, the Friend of the Consumer Award. When have you ever heard of a debt collector <laughs> being the friend of a consumer? And so this just shows you the power of an outward mindset. It was a win-win. Uh, another question, kind of related to what we just talked about, um, how can I make this better? You know, you, you, you observe a problem, there's something wrong, something's not the way it should be, and instead of saying, who's going to fix this mess, you think outwardly away from yourself, how can I make this better? So here's a picture of um, near our apartment. I live on the, uh, the edge of town. I don't like litter. Um, it's ugly. It just kind of pulls me down. I realize there's no way I could clean this up, and even if I did, the wind would just blow it back. But what I could do is I could take one little piece, one little piece of land that you know, was just wheel ruts and trash and broken glass. I cleaned it up, dug some stones out, put them around there. I put in a walkway so that uh, people didn't have to walk through the mud. And, and it was interesting what happened. Uh, my neighbors saw me doing this, and I'm not sure what they were thinking. A lot of times, they, I, I'm sure they're thinking, what is that crazy American doing now? <laughs> because I, I kind of do weird things. But they, they came down and said, hey, I bought this bush. Do, why don't you plant it in the garden? Or somebody brought a flat of flowers and said, hey, can I, can I plant these in the garden? Or another would say, and I have some flowers, but I don't have any tools. I'll buy the flowers if you'll put them in the garden. And so it's, it's been wonderful. Um, I have a few problems with the garden. I put things in, and sometimes they disappear overnight, but, you know, that's another story. <laughs> but now it's been about eight years, and I really like my garden, and, and my neighbors like it, and it, it just it lifts up the whole, the whole neighborhood a little bit. Well, uh, escaping from an inward mindset also helps me with my personal relationships. You know, life separated from other people is, is narrow and, and unfulfilling. Uh, when I was a, an undergraduate, one of my mentors told me, he said, Bill, the problem is most people love things and use people. You need to love people and use things. And so this mindset has really helped me as, I, as I've looked around. It, it helps me to see people as people. You know, sometimes you, you don't even see people. They're, they're just these objects walking around you. But when you have an outward mindset, you see, no, those are real people. Uh, these are some friends of ours. My, my wife and I has known this, have known this family for about, oh, for about 10 years. Uh, when we first met them, they had one little baby. Now they have four kids. This picture only shows uh, three of those kids. Uh, I had never met anyone like this family before. They live less than a kilometer from the university, uh, one room, four or five people there, no, no running water, no toilet facilities, no heat. But they're people. They have dreams, they have hopes, they have ambitions that they'd like to accomplish. They want to see their kids grow up and be healthy. And so another question we can ask is, what would it be like to be him or her? So I've asked my, myself the question, what would it be like to be Doncho? Uh, not to have an education, not to know how to read or write, to have grown up homeless. And as I do that, 
it opens up new horizons for me. And, and besides that, I enjoy my contact with them. We, we both benefit it. We're both enriched as I move from an inward to an outward uh, mindset. So an outward mindset looks and sees people as people worthy of dignity that have value. An inward mindset also sees people, but it puts them in categories. If there's someone that can help me, that's an object. You know, I, I have my teaching machine that's called a professor, and then there's those, those people up in the canteen, their feeding machines you know, that are behind the counter. We tend to categorize them as objects. The people that get in my way, well, those are obstacles. They need to be overcome or pushed aside, and then everyone else is just irrelevant. That's no way to live. It's narrow, it's confining, it's unfulfilling, and ultimately, it doesn't make me happy. And so the great escape, maybe a little grandiose, you know, the great escape, but you know, in a sense, it really is. If people can change from an inward mindset to an outward mindset, it starts a cascade of events. It affects the people around us. It starts influencing society at large. You think of a, you know, a big problem, like global climate change. If I want to see that problem change, it's going to start with a change of mindset. One individual at a time, spread from me to others. So let's work together to, to change from that inward mindset to an outward mindset, and let's see what happens you know, to, to, to our communities, to our relationships, and to society at large. Thank you very much.